Today, I am going to discuss the stoichiometry of bioprocess. Now, if you look at the stoichiometry that uh, of the bioprocess that gives the three different informations. Uh, first, uh, it gives the information to study the, uh, the quantitative relationship between the amount of the reactant use and the amount of product form by a chemical reaction or mutual relationship and internal limitations within the biochemical system. That means, what we want to say the how much of substrate reacts to give how much of products that information we can generate. Then this also gives us the information about the validity of the experimental results. This is uh, uh, this I shall show you how it can be done and another is the heat evolve in the aerobic fermentation process as you know most of the <coughs> most of the biochemical reaction they are exothermic in nature to so, during the reaction some heat evolve take place so most of the biochemical reaction usually by most of the microorganism they grow close to the ambient temperature and pressure atmospheric pressure so if the temperature shooted up particularly during summer we are in the tropical country and summer our in summer our temperature as high as 40 45 degrees centigrade and whereas the temperature of the fermenter is 30 35 degrees centigrade naturally the temperature shooted up so we required some kind of kind of cooling arrangement so if you want to calculate how much heat is evolved during this process that we can easily find it out and stoichiometry is basically based on law of conservation of mass that if you if you look at uh, this equation the things will be very clear that <coughs> mass in in through the system mass in through the system boundary what is coming in and mass out through the system boundary so something is coming in and mass is coming in and mass is going out and and plus mass generated within the system minus the mass consumed within the system that is equal to mass accumulated within the system. This is the kind of law of mass balance equation that we have uh, in this particular system. Now, <coughs> the elemental uh, balance is we have a material balance on bio biological reactions can easily be written when the composition of the substrate products and cellular materials are known. So, here I want to tell you that whenever we want to talk, want to do some kind of uh, stoichiometry of bioprocess, we should have some kind of information that what exactly going on in the bi biological process. Then and only then we can we can we can do the stoichiometry. As for example, suppose we want to use some kind of carbon source. Suppose we want to use glucose for the cell mass production. So glucose is converted to cell mass. It's not producing other than the cell mass. But the glucose, when it produces ethanol, we are targeting only ethanol, not the cell mass. So naturally, that our stoichiometric uh, equation will be little bit different. So this is very important. Usually, the electron-proton balance is required in addition to elemental balances to determine the stoichiometric coefficient of the bioreactor. So but this is I shall show you how it can can be done. Accurate determination of the composition of cellular material is a major problem. The typical uh, cellular composition represented by C H 1.8 O 0.5 N 0.5. So, biomass composition we approximately we approximated like this. We, we find it is variation is plus minus 5 percent. So, it is it is quite uh, quite acceptable and one mole of biological material is defined as the amount containing 1 gram atom carbon such as C, H alpha, O beta and N delta. Now, here the elemental prevalence I, I have shown in a particular, particular equation, the macroscopic mass balance of the microbial system concerning the biomass production and another product can be written in its original form. This is the substrate. I can write in the elemental form, this is we call empirical formula, but this is on the basis of per carbon atom substrate, per carbon atom biomass, per carbon atom product. 
So, this is as you know that for the formation of the cell mass we require nitrogen source and also most of the biochemical process they are aerobic in nature we require oxygen. So, it gives the biomass then it gives the pro product then due to respiration and other reaction it produces carbon dioxide and water. The composition of substrate biomass and the product in the equation are expressed by the by the elemental chemical analysis. Now, we come across one new term that is called degree of reduction. Degree of reduction means number of free electron in that quantity material containing 1 gram atom carbon that uh, I, can, I can tell you as for example, biomass if you look at the biomass. Now, in the biomass this is this is the formula of biomass. Now, this is the carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and nitrogen. Now, what do you what do you what do you consider that in case of free electron if you look at in case of carbon we have 4 free, free electrons, in case of hydrogen we have 1 free electron and in case of oxygen it always take 2 electrons because it, uh, it has 6 electron in the outermost orbit it can take 2 electrons and minus the 3 electron except by the by the nitrogen. So, this is how we can write the uh, free electron balance. Now, if we if you consider this is biomass the issue it will be what 4 um, plus p minus 2 n minus 3 q here what the exactly you can you can find this is like this. And similarly product also we can we can write like, like this if you if you look at the product that is it is 4 plus r minus 2 s minus 3 t. In case of substrate what will be there 4 plus m minus 2 l. So, this is this is the how we can write that how much free electron present per gram atom of biomass per gram atom of product and per gram atom of substrate. But uh, there is no free electron of the metabolic end products such as water, carbon dioxide, ammonia, while oxygen uh, in the form of O2 except 4 electrons. So, this is the basis on which we can do the uh, stoichiometric analysis. So, this is the this is the this is the point that we shall have to keep it in mind when we do the stoichiometric analysis of the bio process. Now, I have given some typical example in this uh, table you can see the different biomass and I have given the, the empirical formula of the biomass and you, you see that if you if you do the uh, do the uh, free electron analysis of this biomass you will you will get this figure. So, degree of reduction of the different biomass uh, is different though they are very close to each other, but they are different from each other standard deviation is 3 percent. Now, we have taken the example of uh, one uh, particular biomass what you call Escherichia coli that E coli is largely used and this formula uh, we are estimated as C H 1.77 O 0.49 and N 0.24. Now, P will be what P is the 1, 1 ca carbon the 1.7 N is a 0.49 and Q is a. So, we can we can if you write the degree of reductance. So, it is what will be 4 plus 1.77 1 1.77 minus 2 into 0.449 minus 3 into 0.24. So, it is coming 0.47. So, we can easily do these calculations. Now, I have given other examples of uh, different substrates as for example, alkanes like methane, hexane, hexa, hexadecane, then alcohol, methanol, ethanol that uh, we have uh, ethyl glycol glycerol. So, different you can you can uh, easily do by yourself and check whether you are coming have a, you are getting this figure or not. Now, uh, the oxygen requirement is directly related to the electron available for the transfer to oxygen because this is very very important from this we can easily we can we can I shall show you how you can uh, find out the heat evolved in the fermentation process. Now, if you want to do the electron balance of this uh, equation that uh, uh, we have we have the previous equation that we have here that we have substrate we have we have we have oxygen we have biomass we have 
we have uh, product because uh, I already told you ammonia does <laughs> the free electron of ammonia will be 0, free electron of carbon dioxide is 0 and free electron of water is 0. So, if you do this uh, carbon free carbon balance then how you do that number of available carbon in the substrate plus number of available carbon in oxygen equal to number of available carbon in biomass and number of available carbon in product. So, if you do this you will, you will get this equation the gamma s is the degree of reductions of the substrate and b is the moles of O2, O2 1 O2 give 4 electrons and then gamma the y c y c is the if you if you look at y c is the y c is the the y c 1 gram atom biomass y p 1 gram atom product like this that we have. So, if you that is why you what we have written here y c into gamma p gamma p is the <coughs> degree of reductions of biomass and uh, y, y, y p and gamma p uh, this is multiplied by this. Now, if you if you divide by 4 we will give the b and b is the oxygen uh, that is demand in the process. So, we can easily calculate how much oxygen required in the system if you have these informations. Now, if you if you in this equation if you uh, we can we can divide by uh, gamma s and you will come across this kind of equation and and if you when you come across this kind of uh, the, the equation we have three different fractions. Uh, these fractions indicate it is the fractions is of available electron transferred from the substrate to oxygen and fraction available electron transferred from substrate to biomass this is biomass so while gamma b is the biomass and this is the gamma p so this is the fractions available electron transferred from the surface substrate to product so i hope it is clear that three three different fractions uh, indicate the different uh, uh, things because different information gives us the three different informations now uh, second information that we have what you call eta equal to y c gamma b by gamma s this is called energetic uh, growth yield this is, is, is this is called energetic growth yield and uh, and if epsilon p it is uh, called as energetic product yield. So, the, the two, two information is very much required that is uh, because why we required this because we know the I shall show you the thermodynamic efficiency of any biological process depends on these two factors because this is nothing but eta plus <coughs> epsilon p. Now, another way we can we can have the analysis that is another way characterizing the compound participating in the microbial process is to use the weight fraction of carbon in the organic matter defined by the following relationship. As for example, suppose we have biomass, we have the formula of biomass. So, we have 1 gram atom biomass that is equal to 12 gram because 1 uh, the atomic weight of biomass is 12. Then if you look at the formula, formula is 12 uh, by what is the um, uh, molecular weight of the biomass 1 gram atom of uh, biomass that if you multiply this uh, oxygen will be 16, nitrogen will be 14 and and hydrogen will be 1 if you if you if you put this value then you will get the the uh, sigma b sigma b then sigma p also you can go and sigma s also the. so this this fraction basically deals with that uh, with respect to carbon carbon the um, uh, per gram of biomass how much carbon is there that is this fraction deals us like this this information we can get from this then uh, in case of biomass production of the above formula are not adequate for solution the unknown coefficient another experimental quantity is required that is the biomass yield that is biomass yield we can easily calculate when you carry out any kind of uh, biochemical processes if you if you look at suppose you carry out any fermentation process you grow the cell mass inside the reactor and after the some, some after some time you take out the cell mass and determine how much how much uh, the cell mass is produced because that is nothing but equal to uh, the final cell mass concentration minus 
the initial cell mass concentration divided by how much substrate is consumed that is my S 0 minus S. S 0 is the initial substrate concentration and S is the, the substrate concentration of the sample that you have taken out from the reactor. So, you can easily calculate the yield coefficient this is gram of cell produced per gram of substrate consumed. So, then, then we have why this y x by s can can be influenced by the composition nature of carbon nitrogen source pH and temperature as you know biological system I told you in the early classes they are very sensitive to the environment as you change the environmental parameters your your composition your cell mass yield everything will be tell it depends it is very because I have I have given the example that uh, in our human system also the suppose we if we increase the temperature uh, of this room to 40 degree centigrade we will be reluctant to work because 40 degree centigrade is very high 40 45 degree similar to the microorganism they are very sensitive to the environment. So, if you if you if you keep the condition as the good then and only then you will get the uh, your yield will be more the biomass is greater in the aerobic than the anaerobic culture this is very important because if you look at the aerobic fermentation process we always we get more cell mass production as compared to anaerobic fermentation. So, so I in other way we can tell the nutritional requirement for the anaerobic fermentation process is much less as compared to the aerobic fermentation process. And then, then we can evaluate this uh, y x by s is the gram of cell produced per gram of substrate. Now, if you multiply the if you divide by the molecular weight of this substrate and molecular weight of the cell mass, then you can easily convert it to C and this is C is nothing but y c. You can see that we have already if you look at uh, our our equation that here you have y c the what is the value of y c you can the what is this uh, what is this this is y c equal to um, uh, that uh, gram atom of biomass produced per gram atom of substrate the, that is the ratio that you have that you can calculate uh, here here you can calculate if you divide by the molecular weight you can get the gram moles per gram atom per substrate you can easily find it out now uh, this can be again expressed at uh, y x by s can be expressed as eta, eta is the energy yield coefficient sigma s gamma s sigma b s gamma b. So, this uh, this I have already explained the sigma s gamma s the atomic weight of carbon molecular weight of substrate and uh, and y x by s equal nothing but x a minus x 0 s 0 minus s. So, so, so you can if you suppose if you know the uh, b, b, why it is required the because suppose you carry out some kind of I told you the stoichiometry of the process gives you the information on the validity of your experimental results. Now, uh, suppose you experimentally you find out the cell mass uh, yield that you can easily find it out because you know the final cell mass concentration minus the initial cell mass concentration divided by uh, initial substrate concentration minus final substrate concentration the this ratio give you the yield coefficient. Now, this uh, for when you write the stoichiometric equation from the empirical formula of the substrate and the biomass you can easily find out the value of sigma s and gamma s sigma b and gamma b you can easily estimate. So, if you know this and uh, though you can find out the eta value. Now, I told you thermodynamic yield coefficient that that uh, that is nothing but eta plus epsilon p. So, from that we can find out that now in case of aerobic process I just show you this is varies from 0.5 to 0.6 and in case of anaerobic process it, it, it is 0.7. So, if this value uh, comes within this range that means your experimental results is right and if this results varies from that that means there is something wrong with the experimental results I said we will solve some problems subsequently. So, yeah, I think uh, the problem uh, these things will be very clear to you. Now, now here the regarding the product synthesis introduces one extra unknown stoichiometric coefficient to the equation uh, and additional relationship between the substrate and product is required. 
the term is called product yields. So, what is this? Y P by S is what? Gram of product from form per, per gram of substrate produced. So, this ratio is the gram by gram, that is the dimensionless. Now, here also you can easily find out the value of uh, that is in the terms of gram atom of uh, gram, gram mole of uh, product form per gram mole, gram mole of substrate consumed. So, in this equation that in your stoichiometric equation you have seen before that you know that here that the y p value that you can easily calculate it from this equation that uh, that also you can easily find it out. Now, y p by s again it can be written as epsilon p epsilon p in energetic product yield and uh, this is sigma s by sigma uh, gamma s and sigma b by gamma p. So, this ratio you can easily find out this and y p by s equal to p is the final product concentration minus in p 0 is the initial product concentration s 0 is the initial substrate concentration minus s. So, you can find out that gram of product form per gram of substrate consumed. So, similarly we can calculate y x by uh, x, x by o x by y x by s is a gram of cell produced per gram of oxygen consume 3 3 eta uh, 2 uh, sigma b gamma b 1 minus eta minus epsilon p. So, this also this equation we can use we can directly calculate how much how much cell mass is produced per gram of oxygen consumed. Now, I, I was talking about uh, the thermodynamic coefficient of the bio process is given by eta and epsilon and range of thermodynamic coefficient for the aerobic fermentation process is 0 0.5 to 0.6 and approximately 0 0.7 in case of anaerobic. So, this which you have to remember that when you want to uh, find out uh, the stoichiometry of the biological suppose you do not have the information of eta and you know some I can I can I can I can give little bit of example suppose uh, anaerobic digestion process anaerobic digestion process what we what we do basically we produce uh, 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 methane and carbon dioxide from the organic waste. Now, it is the anaerobic anaerobic fermentation process through which we get the uh, methane and carbon dioxide. Now, uh, here uh, since it is anaerobic fermentation process the I told you the uh, the cell mass growth in aerobic process is usually 10 times as compared to that of anaerobic fermentation process. So, we can if we we can ignore the amount of cell mass that produce in the anaerobic fermentation process. So, so, so in that case the thermodynamic coefficient we can assume to be uh, 0.7 because you know that eta that eta value in case of uh, this anaerobic fermentation process the uh, uh, this uh, thermodynamic coefficient it should be equal to 0.7. Now, if there is a variation of the value from 0.7 then we shall have to check that experimental results there is a possibility of the error. So, if you correct this error and then you will find that value will be coming close to 0.7. So, it is a good method it is a very nice way to detect the the error of your experimental results. Now, uh, I, I told you another thing that uh, that the heat evolved by the, in the anaerobic fermentation process also can be determined with the help of stoichiometry of the equation because particularly aerobic process we required of uh, oxygen uh, and because oxygen is required for both for the uh, aerobic and anaerobic process as you know that uh, in the aerobic process the organism required the molecular oxygen anaerobic uh, uh, aerobic process they required molecular oxygen but anaerobic process they they take the oxygen which present in the compound like nitrate sulfate nitrite all these uh, compounds so uh, they cannot uh, they cannot use the molecular oxygen but they use the oxygen present in the um, uh, in the in the compound like nitrate sulfate and uh, nitrite like this so here that uh, now now here that uh, the heat evolved in the aerobic fermentation process we can calculate with the help of the equation that is uh, 4 into q 0 into b 
q 0 is the approximately equal to 133, 133 k kilojoules per equivalent free electron transferred from substrate to carbon dioxide. The, the, so, if you multiply it by b and that uh, then we actually this will get the give you the information kilojoule of carbon atom of substrate consumed. Now, here I want to show you something that you know that q actually q is equal to 4 q 0 into b and what is the word? this is equal to kilojoule per gram atom substrate. Now, question is that you know in the in the biological process we try to find out per unit cell mass for, uh, uh, formation how much is the is the product formation. So, how you can find out? So, but here if you multiply it suppose uh, the, uh, the if you, you know that uh, y x by s y, y x by s is nothing but gram. Now, so but here what I can do? I can I can multiply this with the molecular weight of mole, molecular weight of uh, substrate, we can multiply it and then y x the if we multiply molecular weight they will be gram of substrate kilo joule uh, heat produced per gram of substrate and y x by s is what y x by s is the gram of cell mass produced per gram of substrate. So, you know that so the here I have written like this that if you if you multi divide by molecular weight of substrate by yield coefficient then you will get the information per gram cell mass formation how much heat is developed that is that you can find out. Suppose, you want to produce uh, 10 kg of Baker's is in the Baker's is fermentation process. So, for the production of 10 kg of Baker's is how much is, is heat is developed you can easily calculate with the help of this equation. So, uh, this is all I want to do, tell about the stoichiometry of bio process the next class I, I shall discuss about the different uh, problems that we have with the uh, stoichiometry of bioprocess. So, that your conception will be little bit clear. Thank you.